Okay, parents, I know many of you just found out your kids are gonna be homeschooled until at least May 1st. It's a really long time, and I know some people are feeling a little nervous and overwhelmed and wanting to keep um, the educational skills going at home and maintain the skills that your kids have been learning at school. So I thought I would share a few tips and tricks on how to do this in a way that's that's somewhat easy and user-friendly. So I hope that this helps. Um, some of my first tips are just like day-to-day -day tips, things you can do without having to restructure your entire life around your kids' education. So one of the first easy things that we all think of are websites. Put your kid on the computer, give them a laptop, and send them onto one of these sites, and you know that there's going to be some educational value to come from it. So the trick is just finding the ones that are best for your kid. Um, Zern, Z-E-A-R-N, math is a great one. Uh, they really walk your kid through step by step and they don't move on to a new level until they've passed off a certain level and it'll test your kid right when they start to see where they're at with math and kind of just work that work through that with them. Um, you do need to sign up and get a, a code for it. Anyone who's been my student, I have a code for you. Um, Starfall is a great website. If you go on to Starfall, there's some really good guided reading on there. So make sure you look for reading and find your kid's level. Find a book that would interest them. Uh, abcmouse.com, coolmath.com, funbrain.com are all good ones to try. Um, if kids are still working on shapes, colors, letters, and rhyming words, Sesame Street Online is really fun. Um, another good one for science concepts, if your kid's really into science, would be National Geographic Kids. And you can even have them do some writing based on the things that they learn on that website. It works really great for research and reading material. And lastly is PBS Kids. Not everything on there is really educational, but it can be um, a, a good reward that's not totally <laughs> um, mind-numbing, if that makes sense. So that's a good one to say, okay, if you can finish these math problems, if you can do something on... Starfall, if you can read three books, then you get to play whatever you want on PBS Kids. So that's not the worst. Uh, YouTube has amazing resources. They have a lot of great read-alouds. If you search for read-alouds at different grade levels, you'll come up with a lot of good things. Um, people just reading books and talking through the character analysis, the first, middle, end, that kind of stuff. And also on YouTube, you can learn like all kinds of different concepts for kids and they have some great teachers on there with a whiteboard giving a little lesson so those are good um go noodle is a really great movement tool if your kids are cooped up inside all the time and they need some movement breaks make an account on go noodle and there's tons of fun things they can dance along to a lot of kids really get excited about that um some other great video resources are story bots they teach different concepts like science related and math related uh, through song and they're kind of entertaining. And then Wild Kratz with the K, they are teaching all about animals. So it's something that's really easy to get your kid to watch and easy for you to put on. But there's some science involved and they're learning some cool facts about animals. Um, other things that you can do is you can count everything. And you probably have already thought of this, but as you go throughout your day and you're in your house and you're playing a game with your kid. Count all the game pieces. Everything around your house, you can go through and count something every hour, every couple hours with them. Count the things that you see outside the window. How many cars do you see parked? How many trees do you see? And when they're eating food, how many goldfish do you have on your plate? And that sort of thing. And you can review first letter sounds as you go through the day as well. So maybe you're watching a movie as a family. Well, what T the title of this movie, what's the first sound that you hear? What letter would that be? Um, you can encourage rhyming words as you play different games on the tablet or read books or eat food together. You can just talk about words that rhyme. Oh, this hat, it rhymes with cat. Things like that are really helpful. And um, spelling or writing their first name, you can sometimes do this as you just sit at the table just oh hey spell your name again for me or um, if you just have paper and pen lying around have them do that before they get access to their favorite game or toy or treat for the day 
um, have them write their name for you, first or last, whichever one that they're working on, or both. Throughout the day, um, you can watch the clock with your kid. You can discuss what time it is. Oh, it's lunch. What time do we have lunch at again? And you can say, oh, it's 12 o'clock. What do we do at 12 o'clock? And then compare the analog clock to a digital clock. If your kid is ready to start reading those hands on the clock, you can kind of compare those and, and make sure that they are learning to read the time. Um, read books with them. Uh, even online books and discuss it with them. Ask them the who, what, where questions. Where did this character go? And encourage independence as you go through the day. See what little things that you are doing for your kid that they could be doing themselves. And maybe just pick one thing a day to have them do on their own. Uh, even um, fine motor is helpful. So if they have toys that encourage their finger manipulation and fine motor skills, that's extremely helpful and it builds toward being able to tie shoes and type and some other important life skills. Uh, cutting and gluing is really helpful, so if you just have some construction paper or just craft paper laying around something that you don't need anymore, your kid can just cut it up, glue it however they want, color it. Those are some great fine motor skills to keep maintained while they're not in school because those are things they're normally doing in school that they could easily reg regress in. Um, something important is setting boundaries and expectations for your kids. So saying first blank, then blank. And for example, you would say, first we're doing this craft, then you get to watch your show. Or first, we're going to do this matching game together, then you get to play outside. First we're counting, then we're eating. First we're counting the crackers, then we're eating them, for example. You can do that with lots of things, and it just encourages you to get a little bit more skills in your day than you would if you were just hanging out all day. And if all these ideas overwhelm you, just pick one. Just pick one of the things I said and just make it a goal for your day or for your week. And hopefully you'll be able to get a little bit more out of your day while you're stuck at home. Um, the last one I thought of was when you're coloring with your kids, um, even if you're just doing it for fun. Uh, really reinforce them if they're staying in the lines and encourage them to stay within the lines of something they're coloring. If they do, really praise them, get excited, maybe provide some sort of fun toy or show that they like. If they're holding their utensil correctly, really praise that as well. And if they're using a variety of colors, especially accurate colors, if the tree trunk is brown and the leaves are green, let's really get excited about that. Um, those are just some simple skills that we work on at school that you can continue to do while you're at home. So I hope that something in this video is helpful.